باشه ببینید دو دستش بست است رمق نداره دیگه خست است یاد پهلوی پشک هست است من دوم آلم آنه که جلو چشای سنش پر پر شد تو خونه نشست و هر شد نظار گر میخه عبر بهاره و میباره سرش رو توی چا میزاره کسی به جز حسن از حالش خبر نداره مظلوم آلم هیدر مظلوم Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight is the night where our father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam passed away and tonight is the night where millions of people, millions of Shia Muslims and Muslims commemorate the martyrdom of this great Islamic personality. If, we, if you were to go to Najaf, you will find a huge sum of pilgrims arriving just now at the Holy Shrine of Ali ibn Talib. Why? Because they are here or they are there. We are in Karbala alive to commemorate this tragic occasion which marks the martyrdom of Imam Ali ibn Talib salam. In a well-authenticated tradition, whether you look in the Bukhari, whether you look in the uh, Suyuti or other traditions, whether Shia or Sunni books, you'll find a tradition by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that says, O oh Ali, you and I are the fathers of this ummah, are the fathers of the Muslim community. So tonight is not just the nights where Imam al Hussein, Zainab, Imam al Hassan, and Um Kulthum were orphans. Now, I did not mention the other names because the other names had mothers to support them. However, if we were to look at these four children of Imam Ali and Fatimah al Zahra, they have become fully orphans after the death of their father, after the martyrdom of their father, Ali al Talib. So, in this sense, in the same sense, we have become orphans because Prophet Muhammad passed away and Imam Ali now was martyred. So we have become orphans. We lost the father that was shedding his mercy upon us. After the martyrdom of Imam Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, the orphans at night used to get baskets of food, loaves of bread. But after the martyrdom, they did not know who, the, who this person was that was bringing them the food. But after the martyrdom of Imam Ali, they began to notice that this person has not come to them in a few days. This is when they noticed that the person who was bringing them food was Imam Ali Talib alayhi salam. So tonight, right now you have inserts from Kufa, the masjid, the, the, the mosque, where Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was struck. Now tonight is the night of the martyrdom and yesterday Brother Hussain Sukhni presented the show and honestly, the inserts that were shown and right now beautifully shown at the mosque of Kufa. Amazing, amazing work that the people are doing. People are commemorating this tragic occasion. But if we were to look at the Quran tonight, inshallah, I want to go through some of the verses which were revealed in the honor of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. Because honestly, if you go to any funeral around the world, if you remember someone, the, the anniversary of someone, they always remember something good about that person. I'm sure that everyone has been to a funeral at least. Hopefully, you know, we won't have to go into but this is life. But Ali Bibi Talib, when we are commemorating his martyrdom, there is nothing other than good to talk about this individual. Nothing. 
If you were to look at his piety, he was at the peak of piety. If you were to look at his eloquence, he was at, at the peak of eloquence. Nahjul Balagha. If you were to look at his wisdom, the peak of wisdom. Knowledge, the same. Humility, the same. Forbearance, justice, equality. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib possessed all the qualities and all the divine virtues that an individual can possess. Now going back, if we were to look at chapter 17, verse 7, chapter 71, verse 17, or the other way around, it says, the day we shall summon every group of people with their imam, and then whoever has his book with his right hand, he will be judged with joy, and he will not be dealt unjustly. Now Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as soon as this verse was revealed, he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, who are the Imam? Who is the Imam, this, this Imam? That if, if a group of people on the Day of Judgment, they will be gathered with their Imam. Who is that Imam? At that time, Imam Ali was sitting next to the Prophet. Imam Ali put his hand on the shoulders of Ali Talib. Prophet put his, shoulders on the, on the, uh, put his hand on the shoulders of Ali Talib and said, this is the individual. Now I ask you the question that if we were to look at the Imams right now, who do you want to be with on a day of judgment? With the leaders that get drunk? With the leaders right now who are ruling their nations with injustice, forcing them to do something unlawful? Or the Imams of Ahlul Bayt will continue shedding light upon the virtues and the merits and the personality of this individual but after we take this call uh, from a brother brother Sajjad uh, a poet from the UK Salamun Alaikum Habib brother we condole you and we send our condolences uh, to the Muslim community in the UK and around the world on this very tragic occasion I also send my condolences to you Inshallah, on, on the tragedy of the Allah Allah Now, I mean, tonight is the night, I mean, it's, it's different from every other night. Yes, we do have Muharram, we do have the martyrdom of Fatimah Zahra and the other Imams, but tonight the first Imam ever to be martyred is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And honestly, it hurts us as Shia the most because that Imam did not do anything harmful for humanity. As a matter of fact, on the contrary, he did everything he had. He gave everything he had for the sake of this community. Yet, how do we repay this individual? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everything you said is correct. Um, uh, Imam Amir al-Mu'min is an inspiration to all of us. Yes. And uh, I pray, inshallah, that we can all benefit from attending the majalis of Amir al-Mu'min uh, and benefit from these holy nights, inshallah. Um, to, to carry on the message of Amir al-Mu'mineen and try and implement some of his characteristics and his teachings in our life mm -hmm. after the Muslim Shah inshallah. Inshallah. Now, how are uh, the Shia community or the Muslims in the, in the UK commemorating this uh, this martyrdom? I, said, uh, I think um, the majority of us um, on these nights are, are trying our best to hold as many majalis as possible yes. uh, in honor of this great man um, and to try and uh, mourn him in the correct way. I think the best way uh, that I have seen so far in doing that is by attending as a community all together in our centers, uh, mm -hmm. commemorating uh, the death of Amir al muminin and also following up with Ahmad of Layal al Qaeda. We all know that the, the, uh, one of the best uh, aspects and character characteristics of the life of Imam Amir al muminin was his worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And inshallah, we can all uh, uh, carry that forward and, and try and implement that, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. And as you mentioned, you know, trying to gather all the communities together because honestly, this is the best way to commemorate tonight because under the government of Ali Talib, we saw that he gathered everyone. We see the Jews under his government. We see the Christians under his government. We see different Islamic sects under his government. So everyone lived equally, lived freely under this individual's Definitely. government. So it's, it's, it's amazing to see how everyone around the world is gathered under the banner of Ali Talib alayhi salam. Now, can you, you know, uh, bless us with a few lines of poetry? Inshallah, inshallah, I'd love to, inshallah. Uh, and while you speak, 
uh, you know, footages from Karbala, from Najaf, from Kufa, uh, they will be displayed as you can see right now. Qamar Bani Hashim, the shrine of the moon of Bani Hashim, uh, is right in front of you. So do express your emotions in your poetry, and along with the viewers, do tune into that. Inshallah, I said. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. If pearls of all the oceans and the earth's treasures, money, power, prestige, and all the world's pleasures, if placed in the palm of Muhammad's successor, each grain of rice eaten, he would still measure. Faith unshaken, he'd awaken the moon, and of its light, he's the possessor. Just like the moon waits for the sun before it's seen, today both wait for the Lord that's creation. No creature is left, but it weeps as Ali falls into prostration. Wow. Amongst hypocrites of Iraq, a light hidden, whose beauty attracted its orphan children. Hunger and thirst in his presence was forbidden, and on his back the mark of altruism was written. The oh, sacks wow. you'd carry with you their buried, Whose lap is left for the orphans to sit in? O father of those who have not a father, left mourning with Hassan and Hussein is a nation, and he leaves his own children orphans as Ali falls into prostration. Allah. Because I mean... it was by God that you were chosen. Mm -hmm. By God, it was by God that you were chosen and your rights from your hands for years was stolen. Their oath to Muhammad at Ghadir was broken until they flocked to you, leeches in an ocean. You'll divide these men between hell and heaven and the fate of he who that sword would poison. Do they not realize who they oppress? That it's led to their eternal damnation. Flames roar ready to engulf them as Ali falls into prostration, protector of his prophet in sleep and battle. Protector of his prophet in sleep and battle on mountains when they ran away like cattle. You were his comfort. On his horse, the saddle, he was abandoned and you shattered these shackles. Your ultimate justice has left us speechless, amazed at how the treasury you handled. A candle would not be lit but in fairness, none favored above others, stranger or relation. You kept justice upright, but now even justice withers as Ali falls into prostration. Stars formed in the sky by darkness surrounded to call for their leader by God commanded. A constellation in the sky, his name created, and he who knew patterns of the heavens counted. The day was promised by God and his prophet, nothing can stop my head from being wounded. On the best Allah. of days and the night of power, the best of humans in the best location, it says it prayer itself behind, beside him be as Ali falls into prostration. Allah. As Ali falls into prostration. Allah. 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 Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I mean, you basically gathered the merits of Ali Talib into your poetry and what I like about it the most is you mentioning how you know all the th everything in this world is incomparable to this individual in the sense that he gave up everything for the prostration or in the prostration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know on the battlefield on the battlefield when they asked you know the enemies asked each other how can we kill this individual you know there's no way you know if you send a thousand people against him they'll all be dead or run away they said the only way to kill this individual was during prayer. And subhanAllah, the only way that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib died was actually during prayer. And hopefully, you know, we can, you know, at least, at least, you know, I've lived in the West and known, you know, for the majority of my life and, and, and seen how the communities revived uh, these yeah. tragic occasions. But the easiest way to commemorate this is to always remember Ali Talib in our prayers and to always, you know, mention how he, the greatest individual, was uh, the greatest individual that was known for his piety and wisdom. And we do thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, hopefully we can uh, continue this, but in a different time. Uh, we do thank uh, Brother Sajjad, uh, a poet from the UK. Uh, thank you very much, Brother. Thank you.
questions, Your Honor. Thank you very much. So yes, I mean, right now, the, 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 as you can see on your screen, uh, the shrines of Karbala uh, are packed. And I did not mention that tonight is also uh, Laylatul Jum'ah, Thursday prior to Thursday night, uh, Friday Eve, basically. Uh, so right now, it's in Kufa. And you rarely see Kufa this packed. You know, if you go on any occasion, you rarely see Kufa this packed. But people are, are lamenting Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib in the place where he was struck, uh, in that place right there. And so now I want to leave you with the atmosphere of Kufa uh, and, and Najaf. And we'll be back shortly to continue what we have prepared for you today. So to that, stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, you know, I usually say, you know, hopefully, inshallah, enjoyed uh, those footages. But honestly, one of the most tragic nights throughout the whole year is the Muslim of the first Imam of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. Now, honestly, when I look at what, what, what you were presented with right now, um, you know, it's, it's hard to bear. Because an, an individual who gave up 
everything he had in his life. You know, we mentioned that Imam Al-Hussein, uh, you know, the great personality behind me right now, who gave up everything for Islam, everything for humanity. But yet, Ali ibn Abi Talib, if we look at it, offered more than anyone throughout history. Because that individual left the worldly desires. I'm not saying that the Imams didn't do so, but Imam Ali took it to the next level. He gathered every aspect of human quality, of characteristics, of virtue, and took them in and showed us how to live a life free of sin, free of errors. I know we humans commit errors on a daily basis, but Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him, lived the life of, you know, of just purity, of just piety. If we were to look at the government of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, we would find, or not just the government, throughout his life, we would find that he is considered as the second greatest personality in history after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Scholars have come together from different sects, different denominations, whether Sunni, Shia, and have, you know, agreed upon one thing. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed 300 verses in the honor of Ali ibn Talib salam, along with the other traditions in his honor. For example, Ibn Askar states on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari who says, one day we were sitting together and the Prophet ﷺ was sitting amongst us. As soon as Ali ibn Abi Talib entered, the Prophet got up, embraced Ali ibn Abi Talib, and said to the people, I swear by him who possesses my soul, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali, he pointed at Ali and said, him and his followers shall be the successful ones on the day of judgment. Now as soon as he said this, the following verse was revealed. As soon as this incident happened, Prophet Muhammad said that surely him and his, and his followers are successful ones on a day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the seventh verse found in chapter 98. He says, verily those who believe and do good deeds, they are khayrul bariyya. Why? is Ali ibn Abi Talib and his followers Khairul Bariya. Many would look at how Shias are doing, how Shias are acting right now and say it's hard. But look at the pure ones in, in, in the society, in the Muslim community. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the one who embraced justice, the one who had every aspect embraced in his life why why are why is Ali ibn Talib khairul bariyya and his followers because he is the one that did not differentiate between blacks or whites muslim or christian shia or sunni although there wasn't any shia or sunni back then it was just followers of islam why did he give up his life why did he let Ibn Muljim, you know, the, the famous story, when he was walking into Masjid al-Kufa, the one you just saw right now, you just seen where Ali ibn Talib was struck, you just seen where Ali ibn Talib walked before he began, began to pray. And he's seen Ibn Muljim, he knows that this is the individual who was going to kill him. Yet he could not act upon thoughts. Wasn't just was I mean knew for for a fact that this individual was going to kill him, but he hasn't done anything. To that extent, Ali ibn Abi Talib was just. Some people say, "Well, isn't this committing suicide?" Absolutely not. If a person thinks there's danger on his life, but has to go out for work, because if he doesn't, he maybe get fired or he'll just lose his job. He can't bring any bread for the family anymore. What does he do? He still goes out when he dies. Is that suicide? Absolutely not. 
Ali ibn Abi Talib left his house to perform a daily wajib, a daily ob obligatory prayer. And as the Imam of, of that time, it was his duty to be in Majlis al Kufa. Yet, he goes up to Ibn Muljim and says, Do not sleep on your stomach, for it is the sleep of the shaitan. This is why Ali ibn Abi Talib is considered and his followers are Khairul Bariya. Because if we looked at the characteristics of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we have to be the individuals who embrace those characteristics and hold ourselves responsible for every single bit of the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because he gave us, he taught us lessons in every aspect. He taught us lessons on how to be good sons to our parents how to be he taught Zainab how to be a good daughter to her mother he taught Al Hassan and Hussein and from day one he was nurtured by the Prophet and he taught everyone under him how to become pious individuals when he says oh Ali you and I are the fathers of the of this ummah he really means it because if it wasn't for Ali ibn Abi Talib and Prophet Muhammad, trust me when I say that this religion will be different. If this religion actually, you know, survived, if it wasn't for these two individuals. So the least we can do is remember them on this night. If we go even further into the virtues of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, we find his humility. One time, Imam Ali, peace and blessings be upon him and his humility. He was walking with Qambar and they enter one of the shops. Now one of the shopkeepers did not know that this individual was the commander of the faithful and he disrespected him. Qambar was angry. Now listen to this. The, 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 Head of government, the prime minister you want to call him, the secretary general, the highest person, the queen, the king, the king, not the queen, the king, walks in the streets without anyone recognizing him, recognizing him as the head of state. So this individual disrespects Ali ibn Abi Talib, the market owner. What does he do? Does he get angry? Ambar got angry. You know, seeing your master being disrespected, anyone would get angry. Ali ibn Talib held his hand and said, there's no need to be angry. Took him outside. They went to the next market. And the same thing happened. People recognized him. Some people recognized him Ali Talib and went to the guy and said, do you know who you just disrespected? He says, who? It was just someone coming to buy something from the store. He says, no, this, this individual you just disrespected was Ali ibn Abi Talib, the commander, the, the head of state. You just disrespected the head of state and got away with it. Why? Because there was free speech. Everyone had the freedom to, to, to say whatever they want. They went back begging Ali ibn Abi Talib for forgiveness. Speaking of prayer and speaking of the virtues of Ali ibn Talib, when the news reached Sham, what's unfortunate to hear about how, sorry to use this, how dumb the people were of Sham back then, the followers of Muawiyah. When the news reached Sham, they said Ali ibn Abi Talib died while praying. The people of Sham said, Ali ibn Talib used to pray? I mean, honestly, the commander of the faithful, the master of eloquence, the peak of eloquence, the peak of wisdom. People asked themselves, did this individual die while he's praying? Did he actually pray? And trust me when I say that we Shia, and hopefully we don't get to the stage but right now we have made a disservice to Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam because, not, because we have not studied his life 
as much as we should. We only remember Ali Abi Talib in his birth, in his martyrdom, in Ghadir Khum. But Ali ibn Abi Talib who sacrificed everything he had for our sake. You know, for a person, if, if our blood father, my father, sacrifices everything he has for me, gives up his life, gives me his wealth, you know, speaking materialistic, putting his houses in my name, giving me everything I want. After he passes away, the least I can do is what? Recite Fatha for him. Remember him. Every day remember him with two rak'ah prayer. Every day I remember him with a Fatha. So Ali ibn Abi Talib, the one who is greater than my father and your father and the fa everyone across the world. We cannot remember him once a day. At least call out his name. When you're picking up something, when you're getting up, you know how recommended it is when someone gets off his seat, when someone's trying to pick, even if it's something very light, say, Ya Ali. Because the most beloved name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. Before we go into a short break, there's one narration that I want to mention. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to speak to his prophets, he would speak to them with one voice tone. One voice tone. Moses loved that voice. One time Jibra'il came to him and spoke in his voice. He said, no, 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 no. I want to hear the voice that used to speak to me before. And then Jibra'il told him whose voice that was. It was the voice of Ali Talib salam, the most beautiful voice on this planet. So we'll go into a short insert, into a short break, present, presented to you uh, the holy message of Kufa. Uh, so do take the opportunity to send your condolences to Muslim Naqil Al Mukhtar and other companions that are buried inside that mosque. And we'll be back shortly. حبك أصل الدين حبك أصل الدين 
والله ما ناسينا اي فينا جرحك ضار Respected viewers, welcome back. Uh, the lines that was this individual reciting right now, uh, the eulogist uh, or the radud in Arabic, uh, he was saying that, Wallah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not forget the wound uh, that you had, O Ali wa Talib, and we will continue remembering you. Now, the best way to remember this, in this individual before the break I mentioned is to easily say Ya Ali when we're getting up, when we're sitting down, when we're picking up something. But the last portion of tonight, I want to touch upon one narration uh, which is mentioned in almost five sources Ahmad ibn Hamad al Bukhari um, and other books of tradition, whether Shia or Sunni. Now, this tradition states that Prophet Muhammad was sitting amongst his companions one day and told them that there is amongst you one person who will fight for the interpretation of the Qur'an just like I fought for its revelation. Now everyone raised their heads, you know, if someone was fidgeting, he raised his head to look at the Prophet. If someone was, you know, ducking down, looking somewhere else, everyone right away looked at the Prophet. And they said, Oh Prophet, who do you mean, who is that person to well-known companions, we need to mention their names. The first one went and asked, Oh Rasulullah, am I that individual? The Prophet said no. There's a different reply, but basically the Prophet said no. The second one went, the Prophet said no. So they looked at each other, they said, Ya Rasulullah, who is that individual? He says, the one who, who is tying my shoes right now. They looked and it was Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. When we talk about humility of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we talk about the individual who put everything on the line. He didn't care whether tying the Prophet's shoes, whether sleeping in his bed, whether the first person to stand up, what the Prophet said, who is there to support me the first. Whether giving everything for Islam, whether being the first person on the battlefield, when we talk about the, the humility of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we talk about something huge. We talk about something out of this world. So when we say, let us be characterized by the characteristics of Ali ibn Abi Talib, let us begin with one characteristic, and that's being humble. When we walk amongst our families, let's be humble. When we walk amongst our friends, in the mosque, I know sometimes I, when I used to go to the mosque, a lot of people you know, would be arrogant, you know, think that they're better than everyone. Let us be humble. Because Ali ibn Talib, you, you're not greater than Ali ibn Talib. Nor am I, nor anyone is. So let us be those individuals who walk on this earth humbly and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him now i would like to thank you very much for joining us tonight hopefully we can continue uh, this tomorrow talking about the virtues of Ali Talib and we do encourage you to call uh, in our show uh, and inshallah we will have more inserts and more guests uh, for tomorrow inshallah to touch upon the life of Ali Talib peace and blessings be upon him so thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ببینی دو دستش بست است رمغ نداره دیگه خست است یاد پهلوی امش هست است مظلوم آله آله که جلو چشای سنش پر پر شد تو خونه نشست و هر شد نظاره گره میخه ابر بهاره و میباره سرش رو توی چا میزاره کسی به جز حسن از حالش خبر نداره مظلوم آلم هیدر مظلوم
مظلوم عالم اون که بی هوا زدن یارش رو همه دار و ندارش رو همه کس و کارش رو مظلوم عالم اون که سی سال سکوتش داده گلش روی زمین و 